Hi everyone. Thank you for listening to Horror and Heels. If you're wondering how we're making this podcast, we're doing it through Anchor. You can go to Anchor FM to get started. It's free. They have creation tools that allow you to do it right on your phone or your computer. I edit. I'm actually recording this while I'm in my car waiting to go to my next client. They make life so, so easy. They even distribute your podcast for you. You can be heard on Spotify, Apple, other sites. It helps you upload if you want to make a Patreon or anything. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. I know zero, zero, zero about formatting and doing this and that and the other thing. And Anchor makes it so easy. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. If you want to learn more, go to the Anchor app or anchorfm.com to get started. Thank you and have a great day. Hello and welcome back to Horror and Heels. I'm your host, Alicia. And I'm Jen. And uh, today we just want to take a quick moment. Um, I know you guys have heard me talk about my love of Jeopardy on the podcast before. Uh, Our condolences are with all of Mr. Trebek's family at this time. He brought joy to many people's lives over his years on television. And we hope that he rests in peace. Also, on a happier note. Thank you once again so much to Joe Russo for last week's interview. Yes. Uh, yes. That was so, uh, so much fun. Uh, he's welcome. Uh, I'm going to say this. I didn't even ask Jen. He's <laughs> time. Honestly, he was just a blast to sit and hang around. And what a wealth of knowledge just about the oh, yeah. process, which I really, I enjoy learning things. That's one of my favorite things. And just right. to. Be able to ask somebody questions about just great things like stunts. Like, who knew? You'll land on cardboard boxes. Yeah, right? Oh, my God. Hella horrible, but I know. He, yeah. uh, Well, you know, he's done. He's done the writer, the producer. He's done, like, all the fat. The only thing he hasn't done yet is acted. So I think he needs to put himself in a cameo in one of his own movies. And also, just a little public service announcement. If you live and own property in the state of New York, if your neighbor has a tree that looks wonky or looks like it's dying, let them know in writing, send a certified letter. If you don't, it will be 100% your responsibility when and if that tree falls on your property. Alicia, you sound like you're talking from personal experience. <laughs> I might have had some windstorms this week, and uh, my neighbor's tree fell on my shed, so I'm dealing with that. And you know what? We are blessed people. Nobody was hurt. We weren't out in the yard playing when that happened. Um, so that's that, and we are blessed that we have homeowner's insurance, and everything will be okay, but just... Just know that for yourselves, because I stupidly assumed if something was on somebody's property, it was immediately their responsibility. I That's what I would say. <laughs> and like. that is not the case. <laughs> also, we're coming into the holiday season. Spread some cheer, but also be mindful that there are people out there who use this time to take advantage of other people before giving your monies to any organizations, any gift swaps or anything, really just do your due diligence so that you don't get scammed um, because we love you all and we don't want <laughs> no scamming. No scammies. Check your uh-huh. parents. Check your parents' emails. Make sure they're not sending people money. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Anything that comes from Hotmail or Earthlink, <laughs> <laughs> not, not good. Not on, really- not on the up and up. No. AOL. My dad still uses AOL. And I'm like, Dad, nobody's going to be taking you seriously. He doesn't care. It's fine. Care. Well, I, and to be fair, your father's like, well, Jen, I've had the same seven contacts for my entire life. They know this is me. And I'm sure that's how everybody feels. I, They're all in the same age bracket. They've all had oh. the same contacts for a thousand years. 
when also when I see Yahoo and my husband goes, well, I have oh, to have yeah. Yep. Well, my husband goes to me, I go, I go, do you have a Yahoo email? And he's like, yeah. And I go, why? He goes, you, and he goes to me, you have to for their fantasy sports oh. leagues. Okay. So yes, that is true. I have one, but I don't, that, I, that's all that I use it for. Yeah. That's, I, that, I, that's I all make that one. I use it for. Yeah. <laughs> Because I, I guess I had asked him or I'd seen somebody like text him like da 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 at Yahoo is your email, right? And I was like, you don't have a Yahoo. And he's like, no, that's the fantasy league. And okay. I was like, that's okay. okay. I, and, and Ed explained to me that that's the only way Yahoo okay. still he's makes excused. it a profit is those he's fantasy excused. leagues. So. He is excused because I'm in three leagues and they're all on Yahoo. And yes, I had to make an email for that. I don't. How are your leagues doing, by the way? Oh man, it's been a uh, it's been rough. I had it's been a rough season. It's been, I mean, it's been a, overall. I mean, it has been, but like I keep like in one league, I'm in ninth place. I keep getting partnered just with the worst people. Like this week, I played the highest scoring person. Like okay. if I had played like seven other people, I could have won. And so I just keep getting his bad luck lineups. And then the other one, I was projected to win by like 18 points. He beat me by two points. So I'm still, I think I'm still going to be in fifth place in that league. And then in my all female league, I'm in fifth place. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. We have to wait till tonight. Oh it's yeah. A, it's Jets it's versus Patriots is tonight. Yeah. So my husband will be out crying in the family room <laughs> soon. I'm sure. <laughs> <sighs> all right. Should we talk about this movie? Cause sure I'm about it. Um, so we did, so since this is going to air this week on Friday, the 13th, the 13th. we decided since we had already done the original and the remake to do Freddy vs. Jason, which I had never seen before. So this was fun. I am shocked. We, I, I like, this was a, a matchup that like I had been looking forward to as a kid. Like we talked about this while I was a kid, like, oh my God, they should do Freddy vs. Jason. When it came out, we were there like premiere night. So much fun. Going to be real honest. This is why, however, you need diversity in casting. Because since I love Jason Ritter, he's the only one of the multitude of boring white men whose name I actually know. <laughs> um, and <laughs> Kelly Rowland. Yeah. I mean, also because she was Kelly Rowland and the 2000 right. vibes were strong in this movie. Oh, but I'm just yeah. saying... All the other beautiful white women were just awash to me. I don't know who you were. I'm not sure what <laughs> character you played. You all were great. Yeah. Or not. did a fabulous horror movie you job. You all got a, did a great job showing your breasts and getting murdered. So <laughs> there fantastic. you go. And being douchebags. Yeah. Well, <laughs> all those men. Oh. Let's get into it. Okay. So, oh, go ahead. I would like to, we usually don't, but I'd like to start at the very, very beginning. That's, I loved the Freddy flashback. That's oh. what I wanted to start with. That, oh, that it intro. Was great. Um, I thought it was a good way to quickly let you know the premise of the movie. Like, okay, we get it. Freddy has risen. J like, we get what's we're, happening. We're not, yeah. we're not telling 40 minutes of backstory to get to a story. Because I right. or Obvious exposition dialogue. I hate when they talk like. Right. It sounds like they're talking to us when they're talking to another character. And it's like, this right. sounds like you're just describing this for us. And I can't. That drives me yeah. off the wall. Yes. Um. God. Oh. The, oh. This is Robert England's last time playing Freddy. Freddy. Yep. And he's just great. He's I, I just. Guess, how do you not love Robert England? Like. I know. He embraces that character so good, yeah. So much. Uh, uh let's see. What? Are, oh, so that means that this came out after New Nightmare. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, I'm not sure. Like New Nightmare is weird because it's like in the real world, so it's a little weird to know how it falls into. So, because I, I guess it's like its own franchise technically. Okay. That's what I would think because it's set in the real world as Freddy's movies being just movies, and that would set that's a different universe in that's my not, mind. Yeah, I, I, I haven't read not, anything that. about that, but to me, that's what that would be. It would be a different universe. So this is a continuation from the last movie before New Nightmare. 
which I think it says. Um, well, obviously, and this is after Jason goes to hell. Yes, because, and that, at the end, I think it was the end of that one, they actually had the Jason mask on the ground. Right. And the Freddy Claw comes up and grabs okay. the Jason mask. So they kind of had alluded to something like that, which... Okay. In the theater, we were like, oh, my God. We were really excited. Uh, uh, oh, Betsy, so, you know, Betsy Palmer turned down this role. Okay, can we talk about that for a second? Betsy, darling. <laughs> like, what? I looked no. up your IMDb. That's what I was going to do. You did TV before and TV <laughs> after. Because but you're over here throwing away roles? Because she said, oh, because they have to hear because it was too small. So all respect to Betsy Palmer. She's Mrs. Voorhees. Everyone in the horror community respects her. I just, I, like. But even now I'm even stuck with this horrible Miss Voorhees semi lookalike. Right. I don't think they should have done. Now just do voiceover. If you couldn't get her, just VO. Yeah. Just yeah. have it in his head. Don't have him seeing her. Yeah. But then, um, yeah, but the, I, I guess or, as a. Or have him see her. Listen, you own the stock footage. Right. Just, just get the stock Put her standing there and make it so you can obviously tell he's hearing it in his head. Very simple yeah. to do. Don't give us this knockoff I, wannabe. Although I get no, but then I guess they had to because then she turns into Fred. It's Freddie. So they needed her to be standing there because it's not just voiceover. It's her face turns into Freddie. It's Freddie talking to him, not his mom. So I, I understand. But <laughs> once again, it's Freddy Krueger. He is not bound by laws of space or anything. So you really could have played with that many other ways without getting. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. But she, but I just can't get over that. She said it was too small. I'm like, first of all, it's an iconic role. Like it's not about the size of the role. It's right. this iconic role. You're huge in the horror community. Like come reprise mm-hmm. your role and have fun yeah. with it. It shouldn't be like a, yeah. I can't do that. That's beneath me. It's like, no, you're a classic icon right. in horror. Go do this role. Like, I don't know. That frustrates me. Now, can we just talk? The uh, first lady to get got. Has she never seen Jaws? Doesn't she know that nothing good from comes from skinny dipping? Also, it is dark? cold out there. I Just when I was in Big Bear, we did tubing and stuff and i was in the water in the daytime like 80 degree weather and i thought i was gonna die of hypothermia really so i can't even imagine jumping into a lake at night and god only knows what time of year that was well based on what the girls were wearing (laughs) can you go uh, by that in any horror movie (laughs) but i'm just saying it did seem like uh, the because this takes place um Springfield is Springfield Illinois right I, it's one of those middle I I'd have to look Elm Street up. yeah I don't yeah it's, it's Elm Street oh but that was Camp Crystal Lake yeah so that was Which your is New Jersey now. that's me I will say yeah no way that lake was warm enough while school was in session lakes don't get nice and warm here on the east coast until and this is if we have a great heat wave (laughs) mid-june so yes you can maybe tube on like the surface but you stick your legs down and you're like i'm saying i no, no (laughs) and that was in california so I can't even imagine anywhere not in Cal. Like we're the warm, probably the warmest lakes you can get, right? Aside from Arizona, and that sh- it was cold. I thought I was gonna die of hypothermia. But you know, by the enough. way, Lake Havasu, they love to party. Won't won't stop. I'm trying can't to stop go Wilson. there. Can't stop. <laughs> God bless you, Lake Havasu. I don't oh. think I'm cool enough to come. <laughs> oh, I gotta say that I don't. I've seen pictures. I'm not cool enough. Um. <laughs> So now we're at this house party. I don't know why. It's like a, it's a gathering. It's a small gathering. gathering. I don't know why anybody's trying to convince anybody that Brett is attractive. Just going to oh. say that. And I'm not saying the actor isn't attractive. I'm no, that sure character. <laughs> that character is not attractive. Right. 
Um, also, Trey, if a man ever said to me, don't make me ask you again, tell oh, you again, God. or ask you again, I don't even know exactly what he said. No, he said, yeah, don't make me ask you again. Because he says Listen. it later, which we will get to. We'll get to that. <laughs> Listen, even if you employ me, maybe. Right, right. Maybe you could say that. And really, you could only get away with it if the employee has had a long history <laughs> of, of not doing it. Yourself, okay? Um, Do it, yeah. But the, you never say that to a friend. You don't say that to a relative. You don't say that to the woman you're trying to boink. No. No. Especially yeah. not me. I'd be like, I'm sorry, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you this amazing front door that we have. <laughs> it clo- It opens and closes. With you That's on the right. other side. Yeah. I'd be like, Brett, get your friend before your friend is going to get got. <laughs> He's gonna get and it. won't be by Jason. Yeah, no. No, no. Uh, yeah, he was such a douchebag. Such a douchebag. Now, this is what I learned about myself, is uh, my love of listening. I can't take a shower without noise, West Ippy music. Pop. I listen to music in the shower every time. And do you bring your phone in to yes. do Yes. Yes. We're going to live, because <laughs> I see a large pile of blood, I'm locking the door and I'm calling 911. I don't need to go see what's what? happening. I'm not an EMT. I, like, <laughs> if there's that much blood loss, I can't help you. Right. <laughs> well, and second of all, we're all going to get got because, and I think my son knows this because I'm not, I'm not good with blood, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Like, I'm a nail tech, and we used to, I worked with a woman, I used to just cut people with those cuticle nippers. Oh, I hate like, when they do that. Doing over there, and everybody would say to, like, our manager, they'll go, you know, Alicia never cuts me. And my manager's like, yeah, people always comment how great you are with the nipper. I go, yeah, because I ain't dealing with blood. I'm not, trying to... I'm not saying it has never happened to me. No. I'm saying it is so infrequent. Like, on one hand, in 13 years of doing nails, can I tell you it has happened to me? But it shouldn't be that. It shouldn't be that to where you stand out <laughs> because you don't cut people. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, I see that much blood loss, and I'm noping out of a situation immediately. I've seen enough criminal minds to know that some sort of artery has been Right, and, and, and I'm I, not, and, and I'm I not watched... Afraid cellular you cut that or that your arm right there the 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 body pumps so many gallons of blood and that that artery right there is pumping so many gallons of blood uh, yeah nope a towel's not gonna talk work about how tasty the hint water is is there just a that? hint of flavor just a hint uh yeah because i'm trying to increase my water and uh good job so here we go bottle number two Oh, number two. Technically, yeah, no, I think this is two. This might be three for the day. <laughs> what I do, I'm real cheap with them. So what I do is uh, it gets down to half, then I refill it with plain water. Then when it gets back down to a quarter, I refill it with more. No, oh, that's a good plan. I like that because you're kind of tricking your mind. Well, for me, it yeah. would have to be a trick because I don't like water. So I would have to be thinking that I'm drinking more flavored water. Mm. So I like where your head's at. So anyway, there's blood on the floor because... He just got rocked. This death yeah. was one of my favorites, actually. Okay. I'm not not the okay. death itself, because it was very weak, just stabbing the guy in the back, like, whatever. It was the coup de gras, the the icing but, on top. <laughs> by the way, um, I don't think that was one of those adjustable base mattresses. That's, okay, that's what I, so I was like. He, said, now, he, just, wrong. he just... Folded a bed in half. That's cool, I guess. You just do that. Because I was like, that's not a... I thought the same thing. I was like, that's not a Tempur-Pedic. Like... <laughs> By the way, guys, I have a Tempur-Pedic. If anybody's considering it, I highly suggest it. We'll I take, a, we'll take a few dollars for that one, Tempur-Pedic. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, my God. We need to theme these <laughs> yeah. theme products that go with the movie. <laughs> But yeah, he folded him right in half. And I read that they originally well, didn't want that scene in there. Oh, um, I don't know why. That was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see. What does it say? 
yeah, they folded him in the bed and yeah, the, the originally they didn't want that in the scene and it, I think it went well with audience. it got the most reaction out of the uh, the screen test audience. So they okay. kept it in. I'm like, dude, that's a that was that was like I said, that was icing on the cake. Well, thank God, cuz if they had given the character of Trey any more screen time, I might <laughs> not have made it through the movie, y'all. I might not have made yeah. it. And we all know that was one of my problems with the Friday the 13th remake was those horrible, that horrible douchebag boyfriend in the oh, cabin. I hated was like, him so much. I hated him. He was real. It was, well, because it was all the same problems. He oh, thought yeah. he was better than he was. He thought yeah. too highly of himself, wasn't nice to the people. I just don't enjoy that energy. Heard. Heard. Yeah. Which we may be having a guest on that has something to do with that movie. Yeah. In a little while. Yeah. Um, so if, let's see. Oh, if, uh, if uh, Blake said the words feng shui one more time. <laughs> I don't think you know what feng shui is, but not even going to go there, Blake. Wait, you don't know? Oh, no. You think I he know. Doesn't Blake know. didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I work in spas. Trust me. I don't oh, know okay. I was like, is. but yeah. So, I mean, I don't really understand it and I gotta tell you I have a two year old so <laughs> assume my house has zero francs right oh yeah um, unless they believe heavily in uh, toys scattered amongst your floor in strategic <laughs> locations primed for you to trip over them so Mondays are my I have I do like one I mean I keep the house clean every day but there's one main chore a week so f- Monday mornings are my floor mopping days Mm. I pick up all the toys, I sweep, and I mop. And by 3 p.m. every Monday, I wonder why I have bothered. (laughs) Today, after my son took all the goldfish crackers and threw them all over the floor, that's when I was wondering why I bothered this week. So I know what feng shui means. Is, yes. Blake does not. And uh, Lori 100% does not want him near her feng shui. <laughs> <laughs> At all. I don't want him near mine. No. Ever. Um, then, let's see. Now, how do you feel about the cop? How did you feel about Stubbos? Stubbos. All right, now you Very advantageous that he was doing his patrol the moment they come running and screaming out. Oh, of- right. Okay, I was like, because I was looking at, because I was looking at the trivia while I was watching, so I missed some of it. But yeah, I was like, wait, did somebody call the cops? No, he was just driving. Um, I guess. But when you're I in have- Elm Street, you just patrol for such occurrences. I guess. I mean, you've had so many murders in your town throughout the year. Cops are just driving around all the time. Here's the thing, though. I guess that's something that they do do in towns. Um, Like small ones? Yeah. Yeah. I think you and I live in such larger areas that it probably happens where we are, too. Uh-huh. But we don't think about it just because so, like, the cops in my area have to drive so much to go or come from the precinct. They don't know that I would consider driving around, but I'm sure it is what they're doing. I just don't think about it. Yeah. 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 Um, And that, I think that has more to do with the type of roadway. Like, because I do, like, I see like cops around but I guess I don't think about it just because of the type of roadways like mm-hmm. I never see them on my street but, yeah. I, but I see them on the more major roads but I guess like in a town like that they're just pretty much all the roads are leading yeah. in. they're all, <laughs> all going the in roads. The <laughs> um I like the actor who plays Stubbs I find him oh I, yes he's in a lot of like he's yeah. he's one of those actors that you recognize I but I can't like remember his name when it comes down to it. But I know that he's in a lot of stuff. Like he's on, uh, that's the dad character. Shit. No. Nope. See, I knew it. I was like, damn it, I'm gonna f this up. Who did you think he was? He's uh, Lincoln Murno. 
Do you want me to tell you what he's been in to help you? Wait, who? Yes. Okay, so the big one that he's in currently is Riverdale. That's, okay, yes, him. That's what I was going to, okay, that's what I was talking about. That's who I thought it was. I was going to say he's in Riverdale. He's he's a dad on Riverdale. He's a he's like he's a good uh, teen dad. I think he was in White Girls, wasn't he? Wait, whose dad is he on Riverdale? Uh, Veronica. No, not Veronica. Betty. Betty, you're right. He yes, you're right. He's the killer. What? Well, See? Oh, spoilers for Riverdale. Oh my God. <laughs> so sorry, Jen. <laughs> I'm sorry. Guessing you're only in season one? So, season two? Sorry. Sorry. Wow. So before you say things, you should say, Alicia, yeah, that show, and I'm not, I'm not. I didn't that. even know you watched the show, to be honest. I was I like. Sorry. Uh, okay. Because I got so confused when you said he was the dad because I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess so. But yeah. what, you know what he <laughs> is. You're like, oh, no. Oh, sorry. Sorry. All right. It's fine. I'm just going to drink. <laughs> well, that <laughs> that's <There>. coming. <laughs> that's coming for you soon. That, that twist. <laughs> it's such Definitely. a good looking cast. <laughs> I love Skeet. I love Skeet. He's the dad. He's the dad I want. Wait, who? Skeet Ulrich. He wait, also. Wait. And oh, I'm still on Riverdale. Oh. Because <laughs> I had to scroll. <laughs> I'm going back. I'm trying to. I'm trying to forget. Because I had was. to scroll to see who um, uh, Stubbs played in Riverdale because you called him <laughs> the dad, and I went down a rabbit hole, and uh, I went. And because, uh, to be fair, so just so you know, he doesn't he doesn't last too long in the cast after <laughs> two. Um, Thanks. He doesn't Thanks. die. He don't. Okay. Okay. Just. Sh- <laughs> he definitely doesn't die. Well, that's the st- st- I no, I don't want to know. Okay, it's fine. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. He's gonna be okay. But 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 even th- I like. Me and my brother are so sensitive about spoilers. I'm like, I cannot enjoy a show if I know what's going to happen. Even if I know a character's a lot. Like, I hate billboards when they're doing like, oh. Okay, see, so- and this was the show I knew him actually better from was um, was Scorpion. Mm. Yeah. That's funny. My dad's uh, friend was asking me if I had seen that. And I haven't. I have a friend who watched it faithfully. It's on my list of shows. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I've heard. Spoilers, it's based on real stories. Oh, no. That's who he was. No, I was watching... You ever watch repeats and you can't place where somebody was? Have you ever watched Heart of Dixie? Also good shows. Now we're just on a CW. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay, (laughs) so yes. So, uh, Officer Stubbs, I'm a big fan of his. I feel like he took control of the situation. This is my problem with Officer Stubbs. I understand he only moved to town... He says, like, he joined the force a month ago. Mm-hmm. I understand that apparently the way they ended Freddy was to take him out of people's memories. minds, yeah. Um, here's the thing, though. People who are tasked with serving and the, protecting the community... Mm-hmm. Uh, They need to know what has happened in said community. Yes. They need to be up to date. They can't do their jobs without that information. Just letting you know. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah. And. um, So then he, so he dies. uh, And then, okay, so this part trip me out because they're at school and she's like oh my god well, this is after the creepy dad scene which I don't like the way he played that because it was very creepy what do you mean it was after he tried to give the main girl what's her name Lori he which is funny Lori you know no, Halloween I you're jumping ahead oh that was after okay you're jumping so they, ahead so now now Brett is on 
the porch with his dad. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was getting ahead of that. And him and the dad get got, you know, you're in a dream sequence because yeah. you're like, at first I was like, um, either this dad is super easygoing or he's being really respectful of the fact that his son's best friend was just murdered where he was. Like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. But then I'm like, oh, that's right. Okay, we're in a dream sequence. Yeah. And then and I like then, how Freddie's like, I don't have the energy yet. He like swipes I, at him. Right. <laughs> and thank God he got killed. Because honestly, not for nothing, that's the best thing that could have happened to Brett. Because your <laughs> your best going friend down a good path. Your best friend gets murdered. You clearly have a drinking problem. <laughs> and now your father's head has fallen off in your Into lap. Into your lap. Your life is never getting better, John. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> you yeah, hit rock bottom. It's all downhill. <laughs> it's like, you're not, you're not, you're just not coming back from that. There's no therapy. There's no, no there's no nothing. No. Um, but can we talk about how Jason killed him in such a violent manner, which is fine, with the machete? Like, I felt like he sliced the dad's head in half and also sliced him in half. Right. And then they're like, when they go to school the next day, and Kelly Rowan is like, they're saying it was suicide. That he took, what's his name's life, and his, and then he took his dad's life and his own life. And I'm like, how do you pass off him right. being chopped in half as he took his own life? Well, I just <laughs> consider that, like, stupid rumors. I, or, but... or, well, no, this is what I took it as later in the movie once you realize what the cops are trying to do. Trying to cover up Freddy. Right. So they're like, if we say it was this guy who did everything, yeah. the fear won't come back. Freddie won't have any power. I guess, yeah, I guess it could and, kind of... And to be fair, we are the only ones who saw oh, how... Jason, yeah. Who saw how he died. So from the cop's point of view, okay, let's just wrap up this body and call but, it a day. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I guess it could have... I don't know. I guess it'd be hard to, to show that because it... Just watching it, and this wasn't my first time seeing it, but just hearing that line, I was like, really? Like, they tried to pass it? Because also, it's a small town, so I feel like you wouldn't really able to be able to keep that a secret. Because I'm sure that, well, I was going to say, I'm sure the cops weren't the ones who found him. It had to be a neighbor or somebody. So, I don't know how no, you would... No, I'm fairly certain it was probably the cops, because... I would think you would have people at a minimum doing a loop patrol on those five children. Well, houses. and then and then like you said, he was already patrolling the first time. So right. yeah, no, not... it seems that patrols happen pretty frequently in that town. Um, yeah. And also, if you think about it, it's really the children's fear that the yeah. parents are concerned about. So. If one of the other adult neighbors were to find it, they would probably pretty easily go yeah. along with the story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is interesting because you think about it, like, that had to be generations where it's like, we have to keep you, how long do you keep your child quiet before you tell them what happened? Right. Like, once you hit 18, then I tell you this was actually going on in this town. And, yeah. and do you pass that on to the new neighbors? You're like, here's some brownies, by the way. We're trying to keep a dream demon murder out of our kids' lives, so keep that a secret. Or I guess you just wouldn't tell the new neighbors. I don't know. There's just that's crazy. That's a crazy thing to have to keep going for like twenty years. Yeah, but to be fair, when you move into a new town, like I moved into my town, I didn't bother looking up the crimes that had previously happened here. So I think that's something I'm going to start doing. I feel like I want to be informed. I want to know if there's a Jason or a Freddy situation happening. Mm. You're like, I don't want to know. My biggest, my biggest concern in my town is, uh, I've seen the way these people drive. They think stop signs are optional. I'm way more oh. scared of them than I am a Jason or they a Freddy. I'm going to be honest. They do that here too. I can't even. Like, I can't I'm, even. I'm way more scared of them than I yeah. am. Yeah. 
Listen, yeah. I think I'm a little too mouthy for a serial killer. Like, <laughs> he just doesn't have the time for me. Or he would just kill you immediately. Yeah. He'd be like, I can't. <laughs> um. Oh, I read that um, Kelly Rowland actually liked making this movie. And, like, TV shows and her appearances, people keep trying to make her be like, oh, I'm so ashamed. And she was like, no, I had fun making it. It was a big hit. It was awesome. So I'm like, well, props to Kelly Rowland. Well, other girls didn't like making it. Well, they which, did. I mean, so. Yeah. I am very thankful that I do work in an industry where you have to work your way up but that simply means that you do like a lot of pedicures yeah for the first few <laughs> like, years. and like yeah, gross maybe nails. not as much acrylic sets and then you build your acrylic portfolio and you build your dip portfolio you know and you build yeah. your nail art portfolio you don't have in my industry i don't have to take a role i'm not loving just to get my name on the board somewhere and so my heart breaks for people that have to make that decision and I'm very glad that I'm in an industry where I don't have to yeah yes if I had to do some pedicures on some less than fabulous feet of course (laughs) but uh you know yeah yeah it's different it's different that's that's not in perpetuity on a screen where anyone can watch if it's something (laughs) I didn't like feel comfortable with yeah. with yeah um so now we go to the mental asylum mm-hmm. um gotta say didn't love this part of the storyline i guess i get it I mean, please, they, they melded something like 9, 10, or 11 scripts together, so... Oh, yeah. It was um, there's... Yeah. Um, but, uh, I gotta say, um... I really... And I know it was the point, but first of all, it's against the law to administer medicine to a patient without telling the patient what that's for. So the fact that they were all giving everyone that hyperol and not telling them what it was for is significantly against the law. It's yeah, my places do stuff like that. Like it's it bothers me on such a level. Um and uh I feel like I don't understand what the reason for not telling them what it was for was. I guess that's more to my point. Like, oh, we're going to see if that helps with your dreams so that whatever's bothering you in your sleep is no longer. Bo- it, there just didn't seem to be a reason. Because even when well, you find well- but when you find out what it does, there's no reason to not tell someone. Well, but that's the thing. Like, in these movies, the those places are supposed to be a bad guy in itself. Like, that is not, right. like, those places are not I supposed to be guess. someplace where you respect them. Like, it's supposed to be a horrible right. place. And, and I guess that really bothers me because when you put a stigma like that on mental health issues... In media, it deters people from getting the help that they need, right or wrong. It has that impact. And I think as a society for people with mental health issues, we need to stop stigmatizing. I understand that it makes a good story, but there's a way to to show somebody in a mental health facility and still show that place. Honestly, until in the Halloween remake, until those two horrible guards. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dr. Loomis showed Michael a lot of compassion. Oh, yeah. That nurse was not rude or dismissive to him once. Even that janitor was kind. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. There's a way to show these types of places 
and show that, you know, there are people who have problems and not make it so horrible and not make it so stigmatized so that if people do need help, they can go get it. But also, I do understand the time frame that this movie was made in. The F word, and I don't mean fuck, was thrown around in this movie. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, this would not fly. This would not make it to the screen. Sometime. No, they had they had a problem with it. Like it was an on screen, it was an on screen um, improv. It wasn't in the script. Like the directors didn't even want it in there. So, guess what? <clears throat> uh, last week, I said something in this podcast <laughs> that later. I was like, hmm, it, this isn't sounding as funny as I wanted it to sound. And while I was editing, I removed it. That, you yeah. can remove things in post. We've seen it done. We have things called blooper reels now. Why are there things called blooper reels? Because got removed. It's not hard. It's not hard. If you don't want something, no. They said that. After the fact, when they got blowback for it, because I don't believe for a second if there's something you don't want in that movie that you can't take it out. That's malarkey. <laughs> well, as someone who like doing movies, it's it's a it's a lot, and sometimes that one take like there was no way like if that was the bet, and it sounds like oh that's stupid. I'm sure there were lots of takes. Sometimes there's only a good take or maybe she kept saying it i don't know I, like i can't do, i'm just saying you can adr things you can adr things well that's true yeah and they, yeah okay yeah. that's true we've seen hard I... movies in which the entire movie <laughs> was adr, ADR. Yes. so it can happen that's my point and as a woman who is a big uh fan of all people i do not like hearing any derogatory terms use it really turns me off um and we all know i love a good curse mm -hmm. but i like a nice equal opportunity curse a nice asshole a nice shithead mm -hmm. and i even a bitch it's an equal opportunity curse honestly um and that's where i stand on that so i don't even know how we got that to that end of the yeah, movie that yeah that's pretty far ahead but um oh so okay so then at this this is what I've learned is in this town, cops just walk into homes. That cop just moves on. There was not a knock to be found. And I feel really bad for Lori. Because she is about to go down a rabbit hole of not knowing who she can trust. And that's oh, yeah. the worst thing ever. The fear. Like, the thought of not having any, like, you can't, the cops can't, like, nobody being able to help you or not being able to trust anybody. That's so scary to me. That's, yeah. that's terrifying. Yeah. Um, so, um, also, okay. we're at the, um, we're now finally at the high school. Um, I gotta be honest with you. My boyfriend gets killed or two before. I'm taking the day. It's a day. Jay to take her. It's just a day. day. It's just a small day. Not, you know, because just especially from high school. Yeah. You know, because you know, like, I understand, like, sometimes things happen and you're like, you know what, maybe, you know what, because adults know how to act in that situation, right? And they would be like, if you showed up to work after that happened, your coworkers might be like, are you okay? And you'd be like, yeah, I just, I really need to come out, come and take my mind off of it. Yeah. And they would about. move it along and work would happen. That ain't happening in a high school. No, they're going to the talk. Every, everybody's going to be talking about it. The whole school. And then, not for nothing, but a murder just happened in your town. And once again, some idiot who thinks he's better than he is. Is going to throw a keg. Uh, in a cornfield. In a cornfield. Now, I'm just going to say this. Uh, Kelly Rowland was the one pushing to go. And Jen, not to be a little bit 
<laughs> but I thought your people knew better than that. So that and that's how that's how you know it wasn't written for a black girl. <laughs> like it was just written, and then they happened to cast a black girl in it because, yeah, she so she like Holly Rowland did a wonderful job. But I was just like, oh, she did, yeah. No, no I'm make this mistake. We definitely, you were absolutely 100% correct. <laughs> like, they would be lucky that we were still in town. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you would like, be, oh, let's get like, it. Oh, Jen left like yesterday when she found out the news. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, let's go part and get drunk and be on drugs in the fuck, in a cornfield. Like, no. 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 Not doing it. If somebody got you in a home house with walls and doors and a phone, I don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Now we're just now we're just sitting ducks. Now we're just like begging the right. killer to come find us. Right. Him. So then drunk Gibbs, who's upset about her boyfriend, walks off by herself in the cornfield. I don't. Can you explain? Like. And I, while I was watching it, I was like, you can't come at me as my dead boyfriend and get me to follow you. Freddie would have had a better shot coming at me as Freddie and asking me to come with him. That that I might actually go, but my dead boyfriend asked me to go with him into the cornfield. And not even, like, him nice and, and, and like, still alive. No, his shit was still messed up. Like, his head was still turned the wrong way. I was like, there's no way I would be following him into a cornfield. Well, to be fair... There's no way I would have followed Trey when he was alive. So exactly, <laughs> Gibbs made exactly. decisions. <laughs> I'm Most saying, more. I'm just Including saying, Freddie. That's Jesus Christ. Freddie could have just came at me as himself, and then he would have had a better shot than coming at me as him. Now, poor Winderman. What has he ever done to anybody? Oh, you know, been alive. Girls, but. When he talked back to Kelly Rowland's character, oh, I was like, yeah. Slow clap. I'm here for it, buddy. Um, because, yes, was he being, like, a little, like, goofy in his approach to Lori? Sure, I'll give you goofy. But I never once found him... Unattractive, especially considering the douchebag she, like the douchebag she was dating, like, uh, okay, he was polite, caring. That's what I would say. He didn't come over if he had been coming over in a smarmy way, in a creepy way. I could understand your friend being rude and wanting to protect you from that, but he seemed very sweet, very caring. I mean. I mean, he literally dies on that tree for Kelly Rowland's character. He's like, which ends up to be pointless because she yeah. got, got you. Um, and I'm sorry, but once again, where are the parents in this town? You know, because we're so worried. We're covering all this up, but we're going to just let our kids go party. Because I guess at least the screen town... They instilled a curfew. Okay. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. They were trying at the minimum. They were not <laughs> letting their kids party in cornfield. No. Uh, that's the part I can't get over. Like a like that's a cornfield is one of the scariest situations I can imagine. Because you can't see anything coming at you. Ooh, you yeah. can't. You have no 360 vision. Like you no. have no idea. You don't know where the end is. You don't know where the beginning. That's. Yeah. Cornfields are absolutely terrifying. No. Absolutely terrifying. They're not good for people who are aware of their surroundings. This is this is funny. So um, this year we went apple picking and there's a cornfield. And my friend was like, are we going to do the cornfield? And I'm like, sure. And the reason I said yes to this is because I looked up. And this year, to keep it moving due to COVID, they introduced a trivia aspect. So you answered a question and it told you which way to go. Oh, you we weren't getting lost because I hate that feeling. Yeah. My friend was like, oh, I mean, it was fun, but not as much fun as last year. I love getting lost. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, we're very no. different people. Yeah, no, don't don't like that lost feeling. I'm, I'm good on that. It was funny because she she said she's like, yeah, so it used to take us like an hour or something. And it said like average time 
28 to 45 minutes for the maze. I was like, we will be done in less than 28 minutes. I'm answering every one of these questions correctly. And we hit the 26 minute mark as we were like out, out the maze. <laughs> yeah, you did. Time. You're like, that's, yeah, we're not doing that. Um, so, so now Will, Will comes to the party to save her. Yeah. Um, I just want to say, I just love that actor. I just love you, Jason Ritter. He, I've seen him karaoke before. He came to the bar where I used to karaoke once. Yeah. Is he good? Yeah, he was good. Good. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Oh. Yeah, it was pretty fun. I just loved him. Did you watch Parenthood? No. Okay. He's in Parenthood, and he is very good. I like him. No, everything that I've seen him, yeah. I like him. There was and I even, love, love his dad. There's even this little known show with him and um, Alexis Bledel. And uh, it was actually canceled before it ever aired. But you can watch it for free on Pluto. I want to say Pluto. Might have been Tubi. Um, and it was, a star- it was very fun. It was stupid. It was silly. Can we get I, a name? I... I Really have <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna hype it up, I need to know what it's called. True, true, true. I'm, I'm assuming it'll be on his IMDb. We can only hope. His wife is very pretty. I totally that forgot that he did this show. <laughs> oh, it might not be on here. Hold on. Us and them. Hmm. And it was very cute. He's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Wasn't he in that show called The Event or something? I don't know. I'm I'm scrolling and it's taking me. I don't think he was in The Wicker Man. Oh, we're doing that one. Oh, we absolutely are. I just always forget he's in it. Um. Okay, so party happens more. Yeah, gen- I know. I'm like we're <laughs> we're really diving into this one. Um, oh. I loved the special effects of Jason on fire. Thought those were good. Oh, yeah. Come on. A flaming machete through the chest. I mean, listen, Amazing. If I'm going to die, I want to go out. If like I'm a G. Like, horrifically, flaming machete through the chest. That's like, a story for the That's game. badass. Like, yes. like, you're definitely yes. getting into heaven because it's like, well, I got a flaming machete through, through my chest. Right. <laughs> like, you, like... That's super badass. That's uh, but my other favorite death happened before that is when they're making fun of Jason and he just flips old boy's head around. Oh, yeah. And you're just like, oh, all right. Well. But at first, I didn't see that the guy had the flame. So he throws Everclear. And I'm like, you think a little vodka is going <laughs> to deter a man who just turned red? Because I didn't see the flame, and then I see him light him. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Homeboy had a plan. He had a plan. Okay, I, I got it's you. It's a pretty decent plan if you don't know who Jason is. If you think I mean, he's a regular human, that's an amazing plan, actually. Not I don't gonna lie. It. Not gonna lie. Even if I knew who Jason was, I'm still gonna try fire. I will always, I, always I try say, fire. <laughs> like the fact that he paused for a minute. Yeah. You're like, well, that kind of makes sense if you do. Like, okay, so if you knew who Jason was, you're going to try it. You're still immediately going to run because you know that's only going to slow him. Right, right. We're not stopping. But anything. he's like, just stand- <laughs> he stands there for a minute, like, uh, this should be having more of an impact on this individual. <laughs> And then Why is he not screaming? <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, oh shit, you gotta bounce from this. Um so Will then tells Lori. Lori goes home and now her dad wants her to take some weird ass pills, which okay, is what so. you literally jumped to way before so i, I did i did back up. i told you i was like excited about reading the trivia so i was like looking up and paying attention and then uh, yeah so i got a little mixed up but he but he doesn't actually even tell her about her dad he says like he starts to tell her and then he gets cut off so she's like what are you 
she he didn't actually get to tell her what he saw or what he thought he saw. No, he did. No. Yeah, he says, I was climbing up your, wi- this is why I was institutionalized. I was climbing up your window. But then he's uh, like, and I saw, like, I, cause I, cause I, I he played says, it. He says, I saw your dad mm. stamp. They flash forward to it. No, I see, I know that they did the, the, the flashback, but yeah. at that point he starts to tell her and then Kelly comes in and interrupts cause she, he gets cut off. And I don't know if no, he... he gets cut off there in the, I'm sorry. I flash forward to the truck right before the dad pulls her out. Yes. Yeah. He finally yeah. tells her in the That's truck. That's when it, yes. yes. Okay, yes. sorry, okay, we were still so, on two different parts. Yes. So at this point, she still doesn't know. Right. She goes home to the dad. He has. She doesn't know that he's, like, suspect. And he's offering her the creepy drink. Yeah. Yeah. That creeped me out. I was like, he's doing this a little bit creepy. Because we are, and, and it kind of bothers me when it when they the character becomes creepy after we know something about yeah. them. I'm like, and that's kind of cheating. She's Now she's in the truck with Will, and now dad tries to kill Will, and now he's trying to throw, and he couldn't get her to take him in the orange juice, and now he's just gonna throw them <laughs> down her throat. Um, I, I, once again, gotta love Stubbs. He's like, dude, no. This is Jason, or somebody replicating Jason. I don't know why, but he absolutely is, and the cop's like, no, we know what this is. No, 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 you don't. <laughs> no, no. Um, what the most interesting group of people they have assembled as their final group, though. Okay, wait, wait. Sorry, we have to rewind because this is something that we addressed even in the theaters when I was like a kid. Like, what year was this? Wait a minute. This was twenty two thousand three. So I was twenty years old. But we're in, it's me and my dad, my brother, we're in the theater. So first of all, people died on the porch. Now you've seen a lot of your friends slaughtered in a cornfield. Like this wasn't hearsay. This was, we were at a cornfield. We saw a bunch of people die. Let's just drive home and drop people off and go to bed. And we were like, who, who does that? Like, how do you, like you just saw a killer in a cornfield that's in your town and now you're just gonna ch- and they're like, call me later. Yeah, okay, get home safe. <laughs> and it's just like, who, how do you just go home after that? Like there's a kid, there's literally a killer in your town and you're just gonna go home and go to bed. Yeah. Like, that's eh, cool. S- see you later. Get home safe. Can I? Cause there's a serial killer out there. Yeah, I mean. New York City said the summer of summer of Sam, <laughs> like nobody slept. Like nobody slept. Like they all talk about it. So whoever was alive during that, they will say, worst year of my life, didn't sleep at all. Like, right. Right. That's the appropriate response. Not let's all get in the van and then we'll just drop Kelly Rowland off and be like, well, girl, see you later. Sucks right. our friends died. Okay, bye. Right. Like who. <laughs> It was such a, we were cracking up though in the theater. Like we were, we thought that was so funny because we were like, yeah, that's what you're going to do. Just go home and then go to sleep and pretend like you didn't just see friends set on fire with machetes. Now I have to say at this point, I'm just ready for Jason and Freddie to get into it together. Yes. Yes. I feel like we took a little too long to get there. So now we're in this weird room and we've got the weirdest Scooby gang assembled. We've got Lori. We've got Kelly Rowland's character. We've got Will. We've got... The budget Silent Bob. We've got Winderman. (laughs) And we've got the world's weirdest stoner. Not that he's weird. I just don't... I didn't see him talking to anyone this entire... No, he he just joined in the group. Suddenly, he's part of the Scooby Gang. Like I said, he... Stubbs is walking through. And at some point, even if they went to all go get the hyper roll together, wouldn't the cop say, perhaps we don't take the kid who's so high as a fucking kite, he couldn't keep his eyes 
open to eat, like, just not the person. Listen, I have nothing against smoking a little weed. What I'm saying is if I'm going to a medical facility to break in and procure uh, narcotics of some sort to fight a murderer, the dude who's so stoned I'm not entirely sure he knows his own name is not coming on the mission with me. No, no. No, you're not you're not on my A team. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, you're not going with I, because you always need bait. You always need a distraction. You always need someone that can get got. So you can be on my team in that aspect. If you're if you're not gonna be a team like you said, then I can see bringing him on and be like, okay, we can throw him when Freddy comes or whoever Jason throw him at the monster. See, the problem is, is that these people, unlike the other Freddy movies. These people have not done enough um, research about whom they're going up against. Right. There actually wasn't a re- there wasn't a research scene in this. <gasps> hmm. So they don't really know. I agree with you. Bait would be a great idea if you're not going up against a guy who can manipulate you to start taking all the drugs. That's true. Yep. Yep. And he did. He came at him as a the cat, the freaking Alice in Wonderland yeah. caterpillar. I loved it. Oh, oh, it was great! It was so fucking weird and awesome. I love that scene because you're like, "What is this?" And he pulls out the bong, and you're like, "Oh, that's Alice in Wonderland." Wonderland. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Um. So now, Lori realizes. Let's take Jason to his. Um, grounds. Here's the thing. Great scene. Love the fight scene between Jason and Freddy. I think once Jason and Freddy, once Lori wakes up and Jason and Freddy are going at it, the movie should have allowed for the those four to get away. Yeah. And let it just, just play out. Be Jason and Freddy. Because the whole thing is, and there's been some debate about who won. And the man who played Jason goes, Well, I won. He didn't have a head. No, technically, Lori won. She lopped off that head. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and also, it's <laughs> Freddy. Lori versus Freddy. Like- Freddy. For, yeah, and Freddie winked, so yeah. that doesn't really mean anything. He's still alive. Right. But of course he's going to say he won. Like, Right, but I'm just saying I think if we're going to have a movie titled Freddie vs. Jason, once Freddie and Jason are fighting, nobody true. else needs to be there. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, but it was nice to see Jason get rocked a little bit. Because he's usually the biggest, toughest guy. Like, the way he, like, the girl in the beginning, how, I mean, even though it was his dream, how he just macheted her into the tree, and, like, he's just able to rock everybody. That was homage to the first movie. Yeah, yeah. But it's just that he gets to rock everybody in these crazy ways, and to see him get tossed around by, like, the cement thing, and then get speared by the rebars. Is that what they're called? Rebars? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, that's kind of cool, because he's usually the one delivering that that amount of damage. Yeah. And he the, the pinball scene where he's like flipping Jason around like a pinball machine. I thought that was funny. I was amused. I like pinball machines. Well, and that's why Lori said she's like if we leave him in his in Freddy's world, Freddy'll never stop coming. Jason will die. Yeah. Goes, but if we give Jason a fighting chance, Jason will stay at Camp Crystal Lake, which right. is true. I uh, thought it was an interesting coincidence because these both these movies were made separately that Freddy's enemy, his death, quote unquote, was fire and Jason's was water. Like, I kind of liked how they were able to make right. that a thing. Like, they tried to. And I thought I just thought it was cool. It was like, oh, yeah, Jason died by water. Freddy died by fire. It was kind of I thought it was very poetically done. 
I did not, I did, and I, I mean, once again, because we have said this before, we don't like when these killers get humanity, right? Right, right. Poor Jason at the camp. Yeah. And, and and they did pull out him being afraid of water. Like, he was never afraid of water. Right. That part I didn't necessarily like. I did like that they said that he died by water and Freddy died by fire. How can we use that? But him just all of a sudden being afraid of water did seem weird. Because it was like, he's dealt with water before. And this has never been a thing. And it does humanize him towards like, oh, he's got a fear. Like, ah, that's... So I hear what you're saying. Um... Any final thoughts that we didn't cover? Because we have gotten to the end of Lori cutting off heads. So. I like that they named her Lori, and I was wondering if that was an homage to Halloween, because Michael. it was originally supposed to be Michael Myers versus Jason, but they decided they were too similar and yeah. it would be boring. So they did Freddy versus Jason, uh, which they asked Rob Zombie to do this movie, and he declined. And I am so <laughs> glad and happy that he declined yes. because that would have been a totally different movie. Like that whole scene in the cornfield where like, he's just kissing on her neck. It yeah. would have been completely vulgar and just un- yeah. like, Oh, I am so, like, when I read that, my heart just, yeah. Oh, I was thank like, God, by the way, 300 gallons of fake blood. Yes. Yes. 300 gallons. I read that too. Um, and a uh, little fun. Oh, fact. so Brad Renfro was originally cast as Will, not Jason Ritter, but then he passed on it. Um, um, And then, like... I guess maybe he was like, listen, I just, I can't do another horror movie because he did... Well, I mean, I guess the client you would consider... um, I mean, to me, that's horrifying, but I guess you would consider that drama. But he did do Apt Pupil. He did Informers. He did The Jacket. Um. Uh, they had asked they had C.J. Graham to do Jason, and he had played Jason before, but they didn't ask um, Kane. 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 They didn't ask Kane to do it who had been playing Jason, and he'd rejected the role out of respect for Kane. He was like, if you're not asking him to do it, I'm not going to do it. All right. I'm not taking his spot in that, which was kind of, that's kind of cool that they, like, have that code. Ooh, this is very sad. Rest in peace, Brad Renfro. Wait, what? Brad Renfro passed <gasps> away. In 2008. What? Oh, poor guy. Really, really glad I didn't say anything... Yeah. <laughs> it's about Brad Renfro before. Yeah. Learning that information. Oh. That's him. Take him before his due. That's 25. Sad. He was 25. That's crazy. But honestly, that's really when your window starts closing. So, no, I'm kidding. Our oh. windows are already closed. I don't even know how we're making this show right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Ugh. Oh, so, okay, so I was trying to keep a count. This count may be completely inaccurate because, like I said, I was looking at trivia and watching the movie, so I may have missed something. But by my count, and again, anybody, welcome to... I was trying to re-look to count. By my count, Freddy only got one kill in this movie. And Jason had, like, eight. Like, Freddy only kills one person. And if that's not true, I like I tried to rewatch because I was like, I have, by my count, I think he's only killed one person. Jason kills everybody else. It's kind of weird. I'm like, Freddy should have split up the spoils a little bit better because he doesn't kill Kelly Rowland. He killed. Let's see. He kills. Oh, Freddy kills the the friend with the when he that's burns him with the friend. That's I was thinking. Yes. That's the only. That's his only kill no. in the whole movie, which is kind of interesting. Because you'd think that, especially now, like they could have done more interesting kills with Freddy and no, his abilities. he also kill the stoner? Jason kills the stoner? No, Jason kills the stoner because he, Freddy's in the stoner's body, but Jason what? cuts him in half. So that's a Jason kill. Freddy has, like, no kills in this movie. Damn. Kind of a, 
<laughs> just funny since you got top billing, but right, right. And like he didn't split that up very well. He should have been like one for you, one for me. One for <laughs> that's the whole point is Freddie. Right. He was getting pissed. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, he's taking like, my kills. Especially Gib. He's like, she was seven, seven, seven. <laughs> Yeah, he's really mad about that. Because he did, he had her right there. And then she was uh so he kills both of the Jason gets most of the kills. So if we're going back kills, Jason wins. Uh, I love Robert England's facial expressions. Like, I do. Oh my god, he he nails them every time. Like he does scared. He does like ang- uh, his facial expressions. Are and amazing. I have to say, even burned, very um attractive man. I mean, I don't want to sound like a weirdo, but no, but, but he, uh, <laughs> no, he has a great. Facial I'm, shape. He does. Like makeup just sits very nicely it on does. it. does. Yeah. And, he, Speak- and without the makeup, very, very. Oh, I think he's very attractive. Um, very funnily, the guy who played Jason had to get dental work during the movie. He wouldn't, he didn't have time to sit in the makeup chair twice in one day. So he went to the dentist, made up <gasps> of Jason under the mask. And I guess they didn't realize he was doing the movie. So they thought for a minute he was a killer. Like they were about to call 911. He's like, I'm sorry. Funny story. <laughs> I'm playing Jason. <laughs> and this was the first. Well, also, the why this story makes more sense. It's the first one not filmed in the States. Mm. It's not entirely filmed in the States. Oh. So I think that makes more sense. Like people in like LA. LA. Yeah. You have probably that. been used to that. Whereas like right. another area would be like, Oh, yeah. like, an I LA receptionist that. like oh this is a Tuesday oh you're my <laughs> Tuesday serial movie killer great <laughs> right okay I got you uh, and then still though that Freddie's teeth they were, were jacked up they were they jacked up like they've never teeth. been before oh okay, like, thank you they were super pointy I was like what's happening there like why 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 have we done this with his teeth he's I been, feel you on that he's been needing new things to file since nobody scared <laughs> of like, him eh. yeah his face. So he's speaking of his, face, his teeth with his with the wrong with his claws. Hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His facial expression when he's when he finds the tanks and he cuts that one tank and it flies at Jason. His eyes light up like a child at Chris. Like I was yeah. so amused by it. I thought it was so hilarious. He was like, "Oh yeah," and he just starts <laughs> chopping off the things. I was like, "I love Robert Englund." Just his face. It, yeah. Again, facial expression just amazing. Um... And I love that they both got got by their own weapons. Yes. He, he stabs Jason with his machete, and in the end, Jason gets him, which super exaggerated, obviously, but his claws just go right through his chest, and you're like, oh, poetic yeah. justice. Yeah. Um, and it all ends with, like, the fire and water scene of, like, the fire around, but the water, they're at the lake, so there's water. I, like, I just, I love this movie. Um... Yeah, I can't say enough about it. I enjoyed it thoroughly more than I honestly thought I was going to. Because I feel like some of them got a little hokey there. Oh, yeah, while. definitely. I think um, it was a good bring back to the yeah. basics for both of them. Oh, another director. Sorry, I want to say this. Another director they asked was Peter Jackson. I saw that. Which would have been interesting. Peter Jackson is a very interesting... Have you seen Dead Alive? No. Oh, my God. Okay. If we can find that, that movie is insane. Would you like to spoil a little bit of that for me to get me back for Riverdale? No. no. I feel real bad. (laughs) So, Jen, from now on, if a show came out in 2017... I I don't have to... You don't have to get into the mic to say it. I understand. (laughs) Please let me know, because you're like, oh, he's from Riverdale. You said it like you've seen the whole season. When I see, all you have to see is season one. That doesn't mean, okay, it's fine. It's fine, like I said. But I feel really bad. It's okay. This is part of, this is part of the industry we're in. Spoilers happen. It's okay. I know, but but I don't like doing that to people. I try to be mindful. I feel you. Nice person. I feel you. Regardless of what all those internet (laughs) chat rooms say about me. I'll I'll stop the rumors. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's not you. It's my two year old. 
If it, <laughs> Mommy refused to let me have seven cookies for lunch today. <laughs> oh, you monster. If it makes you feel any better, I may have seen, like, I'm so behind that I may have known that already. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. But, but so if that makes you feel better, I may have known that already. I just don't remember. Ooh. Or I didn't know. I Either way, it's fine. My poor husband. I hear him vacuum. Oh, yeah. One more random trivia was this was the highest budget for Friday the 13th at 25 of any of the Friday the 13th. Uh, 25 million. Right? Yeah, 25 million. Not Nightmare on Elm Street, but for Friday the 13th, this was high at 25 million. Which you can see that because there were those movies were so like basic, and you can see how Nightmare on Elm Street is more special effects heavy. Right. Whereas. Friday the 13th is just... They basic. spent 20 mil on the fake blood alone. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. 300 gallons? I can't even... I don't even know how much that would cost. Um, uh, so, we started... Just so everyone knows, we have, we're have we on YouTube now. There's not really visuals to our podcast yet. Maybe one day we'll decide to get pretty and do a visual to it. But for now, it's just the audio. But the fun thing about following us on YouTube is we will add, I have, we have playlists of fun stuff that we find. So like while I was going through the trivia, I saw that during the Freddy vs. Jason promos, they had a weigh-in, like a real Vegas fight weigh-in for Freddy vs. Jason. So I looked it up. It's a fun video. It's the announcer that does like the whole boxing matches and everything. And it's a fun video. So that's the kind of stuff we'll have on our playlists on YouTube as well. So Okay. So real creations original blood for one gallon cost $120. I'm gonna go ahead and say they got a wholesale rate. So I'm gonna take yeah. that down to sixty dollars a gallon because wholesale is usually forty to fifty percent off. So three hundred times sixty. That brings us to eighteen thousand spent on fake blood. Not horrible. That's yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. not even a fraction. It's fine. That's fine. But yeah, so I've shared that on our playlist on YouTube. So check out our YouTube for other videos and things. That are fun. I also posted, because they originally, went, like I said, wanted Michael versus Jason. There's a fan-made Michael versus Jason video, which I will also post on our fun stuff playlist, because we'll find cool stuff and post it there. So it's worth following us on YouTube. Yes, and uh, with the holidays coming up, we might um, show you how to make some fun holiday cocktails. Because, you know, Jen and I like to drink while we talk about these things. Um, little drinky winkies. Little drinky winkies. I really... <sighs> and just the other day, just because we were talking about... Um, when we were talking to Joe Russo, and he had mentioned... Uh, Gremlins 2 I immediately had to watch it and I just can't wait till we talk about it on the pod if you have not watched Gremlins 2 that's one of the few movies it is such a warm blanket of happiness I love that movie and uh, if you're a New Yorker it's just it's so hysterical listen when a gremlin becomes a New York City statue You've got to love it, okay? I don't know what else to tell you. And that whole situation is hilarious. Like, the, oh, whole, the guy was fighting him, like, in the cement. That that whole movie right. is just brilliant. It's fantastic. It's, that's it's, one of the few where I like the sequel more than the original. Like, I'll watch the first one, and I like it, but Gremlins 2 has just a special... See, I, I love, love the first one, but I find the second one... Much more campy, right? Therefore, much more fun. Like right. when I want something, I have zero desire to take seriously. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Gremlins too. Yeah. Come on, we're gonna That's have brilliant. a scene where Gremlins start singing "New York, New York." Oh. I, I need to. Can't and wait. You, and then you have like them. the personality, the intelligent Gremlin, and like. My favorite is the little crazy one who, like, his eyes don't even, like, can't even see straight. And they're just, and <laughs> yeah. We're going to have, um, so Key and Peele did a great sketch about all of it. And Jen will upload that to our funny videos. Our YouTube too, on our playlist, yes. 
on our, our YouTube playlist because I just think, especially with the holidays coming up, just it's gremlins so fun. fun. Um, Which, by the way, we have some fun holidays. holiday stuff. <laughs> speaking of holidays that are coming up, we are we're doing it, guys. We're watching Thanksgiving next yes. week. Yes. Yes. Um, and will will he be? He's joining us for that. Yes. 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 Um, so actually you might get a little video of that because Jen and I tend to like to, uh, look good when we have guests. Yes. So maybe hey, we'll let's take do a couple it. clips of that for the oh. YouTube. Um, okay. Jen, now have you watched Thanks Killing Me? I have not, so I'm excited. I have not either. So very excited for this. It looks like it's just going to be campy, fantastic. Oh, I think, I feel like it's the start of this genre i feel like because this was so long ago and i'll tell you guys how i know the writer director guy of the movie but i feel like it was the start of this genre where they're just being as silly as possible at velociraptor yeah pinata which by the way killer pinata production studio followed us on instagram love it (laughs) we're very popular um, my favorite of all the cheesy i would call them sci-fi uh, that sci-fi the series the channel makes has to be the mega python versus giant croc with tiffany and debbie gibson oh, okay. if you have not seen that and you are an 80s child and you want some tiffany versus debbie gibson nostalgia do yourself a favor and just i'm gonna look up that i have the right um the right movie for you, the right title for you. I'm almost entirely pos- positive I do. Um, and at some point, I would Meg like us to watch Python this part. Versus Gator Royd. She also has starred in such wonderful features as Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus, Mega Shark versus Mecha Shark. I heard of that. Yep. Soul Keeper. Um, and then she, it looks like she's been in some actual real things as well. Um, but she's fantastic in them. And, uh, I dare any of you to watch them and tell me I'm wrong. Do it. Watch it and tell me I'm wrong. Yes. I love those. Lava Lantula. Yeah. Sharknado. Me and my dad watched all the Sharknados. So Zom- fun. Cause they, cause they- Zombievers. Zombievers, yes. Because they all know what they are. They're not trying to be anything else. It's just right. stupid. Oh, there was another one. La- oh my god, what was it called? La- llama Apocalypse or something? <laughs> With a- it's a llama from space. It's it- These movies just don't end. But I think Thanks Killing was like part of the first wave of that genre of just well, absolutely off the wall. It. Me too. Me too. Um, Jen, let's uh, quick remind them where they can find us. Oh, God. Where can't they find us? They can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. It's all horror and heels. Horror in, letter in, heels. Not in, as in the opposite of out. Right. The letter in. Because some people have been uh, confused by that. We're sorry for the confusion. Uh, <laughs> one place you can't find us is OnlyFans. We're not there. We're not there yet. I mean, you uh, know, aspirations. <laughs> aspirations. Um, you can do horror themed ones. Let us know how you feel about that. Would you pay for it? Because. Kidding. <laughs> we are She's like, no. Um, I would never. I would never. Um, actually, I had a client once and she. Um, is a foot fetish model, and she was quite happy in her line of work. And I, say, I say whatever line of work you choose, if you are happy and you're not hurting anyone, go for have it. fun. I um wear a full parka to the beach because uh, I like to keep everything in. So that's my level of comfort of people seeing me. Um. Like, and, yeah. I, and, uh, man. But hey, if you um have that fantastic self confidence and go it, for it, you, go have, for it. Go for it. Um, I will happily though if people are interested in watching Alicia bake a cookie or <laughs> make a drink. Right? 
I'm like, what kind um, of innocent OnlyFans can I have? Like, they, they have OnlyFans where they watch you eat, and I'm like, I could do that. Like, you want yeah, to see me no. eat some pizza? Yeah. Well, if somebody <laughs> wants to pay to watch me eat, right? I am the person you know for what? you, my Let friend. us know. if it, Email no. us. I didn't know it, that was a thing. You know, Wait. Yes. Talk to me more about no. this all eating. OnlyFans is for, like, for all kinds of fetishes, so you can find someone who will not only pay to watch you eat, but pay for the food that you eat. So... I'm sorry. And, I take this back. If anybody <laughs> is interested, that's gonna be part of our Patreon. To watch me eat while fully clothed. Once yeah. again, oh, no, no, it doesn't. It's not even freaky. On, not even. But it's I'm not to do it's that. Not freaky. It's just them eating, and I'm like, well, that'll be part of our Patreon. That'll be part of the exclusive content. <laughs> the exclusive content <laughs> will be us eating. Oh. So, be be excited for that. That's gonna come eventually. Yeah. Oh golly. All right. Okay. I think we're done. We've done it. Another hour and 30 minutes of guys' life. Oh, man. As always, have a great night. Bye. G-I-F. Later.